Mort Coop, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. In studio with me is my co-host, Dr. John Curtis, and we have titled the program Botox and the New York Times. It's a very, very interesting, fascinating, challenging tale you're about to hear. Join with me. Why use the term Botox, which is a, uh, an icon in today's society? Do you know what Botox comes from? You want to tell us? Well, it's Bo for botulinum. Mm -hmm. That, by the way, was a WMD, mm -hmm. a weapon of mass destruction we were going after for the justification for the war in Iraq. Yeah. Thought, thought he had 100,000 liters of botulinum toxin in a thimble mm -hmm. full, just a small amount, is enough to kill you know, thousands of people. 100,000. Now, tox, the Bo Quickly. tox, is mm -hmm. the toxin. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting about that is that in the title of the uh, drug's name, it actually is fairly accurate. It is a toxin. And yet the company Allergan, which is interesting because I mm. think that uh, people should know this, um, refer to it as a natural purified protein, mm -hmm. and they market it like a health food. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a, a healthy product? Do I think it's a healthy yeah. product? Uh, well, John, John Curtis, uh, I have found clinically that the Botox used for voice, it's used for spasmodic dysphonia. Um, it has serious consequences. They don't know what spasmodic dysphonia is, so why don't you explain that? Well, why don't you, you want to be... Well, just, it, it, just in simple you terms... You can't talk. It's, it's a strangled voice. You have trouble... It's called the strangled voice. You, you, you have trouble getting your, your voice out, your speech. You become uh, fearful of uh, talking on the telephone. Uh, your life basically is changed radically. It's a severe disability, wouldn't you say? It's, uh, it's um, not only a severe disability, it... Uh, is a very, very uh, mentally depressing uh, condition that can lead to various uh, uh, outcomes and suicide is. Would you uh, say it could them. take an ordinarily competent, happy, well adjusted individual? I'm talking about no prior mental illness at all, a person who's r well adjusted and successful, and it can transform that person into somebody who is uh, quite devastated emotionally and, uh, like you said, suicidal. I hear them call. I hear these patients with spasmodic dysphonia call me uh, with permission uh, from them. I record them on the telephone. I talk with them all over the world um, via the telephone, uh, communicate with them by email, and they tell me that same uh, outcome. They're, they're traumatized. Their life is ruined. They can't go out socially. Uh, their career is uh, upended uh, and so forth. It's, it's a handicap that the, the public does not understand. Yeah, and, of course, it, it's common sense that if somebody loses their voice, which is a major basis for communication, that that's what the – it would be a catastrophic effect. If you can't talk, if somebody – cut your tongue out, mm. basically. They did that in the 18th century in France. Did mm. you know that uh, in regard to stuttering? Did you know that? Did it help? Well, it, they attempted to take care of the stuttering problem, which they did, but the outcome was worse than the stuttering problem. Well, without a tongue, what happens to speech? Well, they cut out portions of the tongue, and then uh, the impairment was that uh, the individual uh, didn't uh, stutter anymore, but uh, or, or hopefully didn't, but the outcome was draconic. Yeah, and... Did you know that Botox <clears throat> was used for stuttering? It was a rage for a period of time. Did you know that? Yeah. And the rage disappeared because the stutterers were worse off after the Botox than before. Well, I, I guess the assumption was that it was a, a problem of spasming. Mm -hmm. uh, for stutters. Is that what you found to be true? Uh, the, the spasming occurs with the eyes and the face because with stuttering, they're using such force in the oral musculature around the mouth and the nose. You mean the effort that is put out by the stutterer just to uh, uh, spit out a few words is just, uh, it's an enormous amount of physical strain. That oh, yeah, and they're, show, they're spiking in the brain. Like in 1960, the, uh, investigators Roe, Brumlick, and Moore uh, found that there is spiking in the brain for four of ten cases that they had uh, with spasmodic dysphonia and attributed that to a neurological uh, base, a basal ganglia, a neurological problem, and so forth. And that became the, the, uh, um, the medical a paradigm. So it's a turning point in the paradigm. Yeah, before that it was psychiatric care from Traub in 1871 and psychiatric care, but neither the psychiatric care from 1871 to 1960 ever reported a single cure. That's amazing, not one single cure, a neuro neurological cause saying it's a basal uh, ganglia problem or neurological or dystonia. 
not one single cure to today. So it, the medical community does not have one single cure covering 135 years of treatment for uh, spasmodic dysphonia. Have they had more success with the neurological approach to spasmodic dysphonia than they had with the psychiatric no, approach? No, because neither approach has one single cure ever. But they attribute it uh, to the fact that it's an unknown cause. They have various theories, but they don't have a single cure. What's interesting about all of this is that the New York Times in 1992, March um, 11th, I believe, by Janie Brody, said there are two approaches, medical approaches, for spasmodic dysphonia. One was the Botox voice, and the other was surgery. The surgery, in two years later, 1994, Brody wrote the column in 1992. In 1994, the American Speech and Hearing Association, it's called the American Speech Language Hearing Association, officially said two-thirds of those undergoing the surgical procedure, which was the rage for 20 years, um, uh, has left two-thirds of those worse off after the surgery than before. So that surgery has uh, entered into the kingdom uh, of the dustbin. dustbin well, so dustbin. when Botox came in, I mean, it was considered quite revolutionary, wasn't it? In 1884 uh, by Mitchell F. Brin, he brought well, 1984, Botox. wasn't it? 1984, yeah. right. Incidentally, that was the uh, the title of the book of George Orwell. Did you know that? 1984, mm -hmm. which was the beginning of mm -hmm. the, uh, the the kind of uh, Big Brother sort of brainwashing, mm -hmm. where you know any publicly traded corporation can make a statement, support it with research, or you know come up with some press release or some report in a newspaper, mm -hmm. and people believe it. And people believe today. Do you know that there's a report just recently about a very respected journalist. You mm -hmm. talk about Janie Brody. Well, mm -hmm. she's small potatoes compared to somebody like Judith Miller. Yes, Are you that's aware true. That? Yes, I and am aware of that. She... But Janie Brody may be small potatoes if you have spasmodic dysphonia no, I, I, and you're being uh, Botox four to ten times a year or more each and every year. And Gerald Burke, the chairperson of Head and Neck Division, UCLA Medical Center, says there are serious side effects from not Botox, but it's not in medical journals. But, but let me draw that. the parallel for you yes. here because I think it's a valid parallel because we sometimes distinguish various classes of news, for instance, the mm -hmm. news that you're interested in with respect to spasmodic dysphonia, Botox, and other treatments comes in to the science times. Mm -hmm. So we assume that it's, if it's related to science, that somehow the writers are different mm -hmm. and the reporters have more information. They they're, have scientific backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know there was a reporter recently who published an article, I believe his name was Donald McNeil Jr., uh, I, I, Donald G. McNeil, Jr. Donald, you don't want to miss the G. Okay. I believe he has We, we know G. who he is. He, mm -hmm. he works and, and writes for the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And he had published a, a print. They had ran a front page story, uh, I believe, that, that made a statement. March 3rd, I believe, 2003. A couple years ago. Yes. Sunday front page. By the way, uh, did you know that 2003 was the year on January 28th that President Bush mentioned in his State of the Union message, that Saddam Hussein was trying to buy uranium in order to build nuclear bombs from an uh, African country called Niger. Mm -hmm. You know that. That was yes. also in March of 2003. No, I didn't know that time. But well, I, I think I there, the there was a lot of interesting things going yeah. on in the New York Times during that mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. But here's the parallel I want to mention about Judith Miller, who is one of their senior veteran reporters over mm -hmm. there, that during that period, that same period, she was writing story after story about the great stockpiling of weapons of mass destruction of Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. And here we have Donald McNeil Jr. writing about another weapon of mass destruction called Botox. Mm -hmm. uh, think about In this. In unatten unattenuated form. That's that's not diluted. Well, form. if it weren't processed, reprocessed right. by the drug maker, yeah. Allergan, yeah. it would be killing people right That's now. right. In big time. Yes. But here's a statement that McNeil made in that front page article, which was Judith Miller was making the point that Sodom had weapons of mass destruction. That's what her sources told her.